Oh, hello. Uh, this is uh, Sustainability Modeling Lecture number four. Uh, this lecture will be focused on population growth dynamics, or our little catchy title, 7 billion on Facebook. Let me tell you about today's uh, lecture's objectives. I think the first one is to understand the variables that intervene in the growth dynamics of population uh, from a quantitative standpoint, uh, to look into some modeling fundamentals in population growth dynamics. We're going to be setting up a, a simple population dynamic model and we're going to be contrasting some assumptions with simulation results and gain some insights uh, from that. Now uh, in this class we're going to be focusing on a, on a simple example which is the um, you know in, in this case we're going to be looking at the world population. So we're going to be talking the entire world and um, we're going to be looking at how the population um, may evolve over time. You can see here in this in, in this graph, this was obtained um, from the United Nations uh, Population Fund, and uh, you can see here uh, the you know the evolution of population since the 1800s, when population in the world was around a billion, uh, to where we are today, uh, you know a little bit over seven billion uh, and growing. And um, in some scenarios of growth, uh, there's a there's a high um, you know, high scenario, uh, medium scenario, and, and a low scenario. So we're going to be, you know, working uh, on those um, 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 and, and looking. So um, let's, look, let's try to uh, start, you know, with start very simple, and let's consider the world population as of today with data up to 2012. And we're going to be using current uh, population uh, birth and death uh, mortality data um, uh, birth and mortality data uh, from uh, not only the UN Population Fund but also the US Census Bureau and other sources. We will introduce a uh, classical model of population growth dynamics um, and um, we're going to be uh, using this model to uh, essentially starting simple and build some complexity over successive steps. Okay, um, So uh, let me show you uh, the way I set up this this model using our our, our tool Eventsim, and uh, you know at, at the very first cut, it's it's a very simple um, you know stock flux model where the stock is population uh, in the middle, as you can see, and uh, that stock is fed by a flux which is uh, the births. Okay, so births uh, add to the population, and uh, that generates a a dynamic change or change over time, and um, so we have a uh, a stock variable is a state variable, which is population, and a control variable or flux, which are the births. And in this case, uh, you know, and we're going to be coming back to the issue of units, uh, but in this case, it's, it's fairly simple to see that the population and the births are really in the same units. It's, uh, you know, number of people. Okay. Now let's take a look, closer look at the rates, the rate of births. Um, and, uh, you know, typically, the rate of births is given as a percentage of the existing population, and this is what we refer to as the birth rate. Um, now, this birth rate is not really a constant. It's, um, it's actually a variable that, that changes over time, uh, and it's influenced by a, a series of factors, including population itself. Uh, you know, one way to model um, uh, the rates of birth is, is through what we call um, the, a logistics model or a logistics equation. Okay? And... Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about this logistics model, and you may have been exposed to it before. It's it's a it's a classical model that's used to simulate uh, the the growth of population, not only human but you know population of different species, and not not, not you know the, a population of vegetation, and you know populations and ecosystems, and it's fairly you know it's fairly uh, you know it's, it's been fairly tested over time. In this in this model, uh, we're going to define a variable p, which is our population stock. Okay, and um, we're going to be defining a variable uh, that we'll call the carrying capacity. Uh, we'll denote with the letter C, and uh, this is used to describe the maximum population that the system can sustain. So there is the in the logistics model there's this un, there's this underlying notion that there may be limitations uh, to how much population can grow. Okay, and we're going to come back to that assumption um, later today. Uh, the logistics of population dynamics are found essentially by a balance uh, between um, 
population driven growth uh, this is the fact that population grows because there's population present that reproduces and generates more population so there is a growth of population driven by population um, and then there's a, a carrying capacity uh, limiting or balancing uh, that growth uh, so and, and, and that difference between population driven growth and carrying capacity is what ultimately generates uh, the dynamics of, of population um, so um, looking at this uh, from a little bit from more mathematical standpoint the the logistics equation which is the mathematical form of the logistics model looks something like this and I, I want to uh, define you know uh, these terms uh, let's start with the left hand side where we have the time rate of change of population so this is the way uh, quantitatively the way population changes over time and uh, this is what we uh, refer to as the uh, you know the rate uh, in this case the rate rates of birth okay uh, which is driven by you know the what by the by the population um, and uh, you can see that uh, if, if now let's t focus on the right hand side um, the right hand side has a, has a couple of terms uh, the first term is, uh, is essentially this um, this factor uh, or this product of, um, of, of population times a, a rate of, of, of growth and that generates uh, essentially uh, the, that's used to represent mathematically the fact that uh, population growth um, it's a multiple of population so the more population there is the more population grows just because there's more people reproducing and adding more and more people over time uh, so so that that essentially it's uh it's it's the term is that that is used to represent population driven growth now the second factor that appears on the right hand side is the is this difference between the carrying capacity and the existing population and this difference is essentially um, what um, limits uh, or what tends to attenuate population growth because if population becomes close to the carrying capacity this difference between the two uh, is going to become smaller and as it becomes smaller it slows population growth um, so this is essentially the you know the carrying capacity limitation um, so this is a you know very classical model that's used to simulate growth and I what I want to do is introduce this into um, into our it, you know very simple uh, model for population that we're working on now uh, now just to give you an idea of how um, you know how these logistics equation works out over time let's go back and look at the um, at the data that we have um, for the population of the world um, and uh, you can see in in this graph you can sort of identify you know like two you know two areas and you know if, if you look at the left hand side of the plot just left of this dashed line that I just drew I've just drawn you can see that the population of uh, between 1800 and right about um, uh, 2010 or thereabouts um, has been growing um, steadily and exponentially um, and, and it's basically because uh, you know population uh, it's um, you know it's about at the maximum is about six billion it's uh, it's 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 um, it's a number that uh, according you know according to these dynamics it's it appears to be uh, you know not near uh, the carrying capacity of the world and that means that you know essentially that population growth can 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 pretty much increase um, without limitation now if you look at what has happened after you know the beginning of the 2000s the mid 2000s and and today it is that the the rate of, of, of growth has started to slow down um, so we have the exponential growth on the left and then on the right we have uh, what's referred to as the logistics growth which is when when population starts reaching values that uh, start attenuating its growth uh, in, in in the projections that we have for you know from from the UN uh, population fund they make essentially three projections there's a high projection that it's really uh, like there's no carrying capacity there's no nothing limiting growth so growth can continue forever uh, there is a medium uh, scenario and there's a, a low scenario in the medium scenario it appears uh, that population starts still growing but it, it appears that that growth starts being attenuated so that it starts tapering off in the low growth scenario you can see that uh, apparently the 
you know, the it looks like population has reached, uh, it's, it's gone beyond the limit, um, and then it's, it has started actually to decrease. And this decrease is essentially a reflection of, of a system that has reached capacity. So in, in, the, in the low growth scenario, in, the, in, in this low growth projection, uh, it, it, there, is, there is an embedded assumption that, you know, that the world has already you know, reached a carrying capacity. And in this case, it would appear that carrying capacity it's uh, just a tad above 8 billion people. So we're sort of uh, getting close to that carrying capacity. So that's just the, the assumptions. Um, I want to give a word on units uh, and uh, just to make sure we understand this. The, the first, uh, you know, first is that population is, the, the units is number of people. Okay, so that's fairly easy to understand. And carry capacity is the same units. It's also number of people. It's a, it's a maximum number of people, but the units themselves is still still the same. Uh, time is, is given in, um, in units, you know, like years. Um, and uh, the other parameter that appears in the logistics equation is, is this little k, which is a constant proportionality, which is used to essentially indicate that population growth is proportional to the population that's present. So more people present will lead to higher population because there's more people reproducing. So that's that's that that little k, and but I want to ask you to think about what what are its units, and, and we're going to see the units in the uh, in the model. But I want you to start thinking about what should be the units of that. Okay. Um, in um, I want you to look at a, a few references on population logistics. There's a paper by Holler that I that I uh, placed in our Dropbox folder for you to read. It's got a nice um, it's got a nice history of of how. Uh, logistics equation has been used over time to look at population growth in the world. It's, it's fairly interesting. And then there's a couple of web references that I thought are useful for you to look at. Uh, a couple of recent, both are fairly recent articles that have appeared in the literature. Um, and, uh, and they have to do primarily with this issue with the carrying capacity. You can see how that concept can become controversial fairly, fairly quickly because that's, it, it's really, that parameter is what dictates the limitations on growth. Uh, and that's so it's something that immediately, um, you know, uh, shows some con controversy. So let's take a look um, at how uh, this model with you now this logistics uh, equation looks on Benson. So again, we, we still have our population uh, uh, stock uh, fed by births. Now these births uh, depend on the birth rate, okay? And this birth rate in turn uh, depends on essentially three things, uh, on the logistic rate, that little k that we were just discussing, the carrying capacity value, um, and also population, because it's, uh, it, you know, population appears on, on, the, um, on the formulation uh, between, the, the difference between capacity, carrying capacity and population. Also, um, population enters uh, the calculation of the births because the, the, the number of births per year is the product of the birth rate and the population. So that's how that's why this uh, loop here, or this little feedback loop between populations and births uh, exists. So let's take a look at the um, um, and how this model was parameterized. And uh, so let's take a look at you know the population variable. You can see populations there. It's a level um, variable in Benson, which means it's a stock. Uh, it's a controlled variable. Uh, it's got units of billions, okay, so this is the, 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 the number, um, and, um, and it's fed by births, uh, so the, what adds to population is it's births, and it, it's a positive input, and uh, the initial value uh, that I put in the model just to, just to get the simulation started was 7 billion, so it's 7, that's the current state of population, give or take, and that's going to be how we initialize the model, okay, so that's going to be population, we can look at other dialog boxes for the birth rate um, and here's where you see the the, the uh, logistics equation program uh, uh, but here first uh, the the birth rates and it's a, um, it's a it has units of billion per year so these are uh, in, in billion um, people per year that get added to the system and that growth rate is calculated by multiplying the logistics rate that's the little k times the difference between the carrying capacity and the population okay um, so that's um, so that's it for that. Uh, the carrying capacity is a constant variable. It's got units of billion, and um, uh, for the time being, I put in a uh, a carrying capacity of twelve. 
billion people. So this would be the assumed assumed maximum number of people that the Earth can sustain. Okay, and we'll get to discuss that um, and um, and how that that comes about. Uh, and uh, and we'll see how what the impact of changing that is uh, when we later when we run the model. And finally, the the, uh, the other parameter appears is the logistics rate. And I want you specifically here to notice the units. It's, it's a constant variable, and it has units of one per year per billion. Okay, so essentially what we're saying here is that that to get um, the number of births. Uh, that occur in a given year, you have to multiply this rate uh, by um, by a, a term that has billions in it, and this is the the difference between carrying capacity and population. So that has units of billion when you multiply it by this, um, and then of course time, uh, which is given in years. So when you multiply this, uh, uh, you know, uh, logistics rate times the carrying capacity minus population. Uh, times time, then this generates, um, you know, the the number of births um, that occur. Actually, the, it generates the birth rate. Okay, um, so um, if we take this model, parameterize as is. Oh, and oh, I, I almost uh, forgot to mention this number here. The this this value of 0 0.004, it's a value that's used uh, uh, to match uh, the the rate of birth that exists today, okay, and uh, I'll, I'm going to get to that in a second, okay. Um, so if you if you make a model run and you get this first uh, this first cut for the model, and you can look at population, you can see population is being simulated from time equals zero, which is today, uh, to time of 100, so 100 years from now. Population starts at 7 billion, and um, in the simulation, the population grows uh, steadily. Um, and it sort of reaches a plateau value, it sort of levels off at a plateau value of roughly the carrying capacity, which is 12. So what this is saying is that population is, is actually growing to its limiting value of carrying capacity over time, okay? Um, and um, interestingly enough, if you look at the, so these, these are the births now, and uh, so these are the number of births in billion. So um, you can see this initial value here today, uh, and this is uh, taken from actual data. Uh, uh, today's growth rate, roughly, if you look at the last two or three years, uh, we've been putting on roughly about 140 million people uh, per year for the last two or three years. So that's that's the number that you see there, um, and that's that's the that's the reason for, for that 0.004. In the um, in the logistics rate to to essentially match this value, well, you can see that the births over time sort of taper down, um, and essentially you get into a situation a hundred years from now where we're not adding a whole lot of people because we've reached capacity. Okay, so so this tapering off to zero is because the the world population is reaching capacity, and we're going to revisit that revisit that assumption, revise those results um, later on in, the, in this in the same uh, lecture. If you look at the not the births but the birth rate, um, and you can pretty much see it's a similar trend. So now we're looking at the billion per year um, that we're adding into the system, um, and uh, you can see also that that rate sort of tapers off, um, you know, fairly fairly quickly. Okay. Um, so so this model is it's fairly um, it's fairly simple. Um, it's only got births, so so this is a model where no one's dying, uh, and so. And that's you know that's a key assumption that of course is unrealistic and that's why we're going to build some more complexity in it by adding now uh, population decrease uh, so not only births but also you know but also deaths so let's add now population decrease and uh, to to model population decrease we need to think a little bit about what causes the death of people and death is caused by you know a combination of factors is there's natural deaths, there's accidental deaths. They happen at different stages in life, so it's not, you know, it's not a a, um, a straightforward process. It's not like we can say that the more people live, uh, or the more the more population, the more people die. It's not that straightforward. But um, one way of modeling it is is to use the concept of mortality rate as as a variable. Okay, so in and in, in such a case, the uh, the number of deaths per year is equal to 
the population, so the number of people, uh, multiplied by that mortality rate. Okay, so if that's a simple way of doing it, and there's there's fairly good data that's been collected uh, in the world and also you know throughout the world that 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 match this number. So let's see how our Venson model looks, you know, with uh, with now with these deaths added. Okay, so now if you again if you the the sort of the left part of this model is exactly the same as we just saw with the population and all the inputs, but now we have a an additional rate, the rate of deaths that go out of the system, and the number of deaths, which is now a, a new auxiliary variable, is fed by a mortality rate. So I want to take a look um, at the dialog boxes for for those two new variables, and if you if you do that here is uh, the deaths and uh, you know the deaths it's a it's a an auxiliary variable and it's it's got units of billion um, and the deaths are found by multiplying population times the mortality rate okay um, and um, if you look at the mortality rate dialog box then uh, you have the mortality rate is a, it's a constant it's a parameter uh, it's got units of billion per year um, and um, you can actually um, you know um, get a number for that and the mortality rate, again, taking the last two three years of data, is about it's about 8.3 deaths per a thousand people. Okay, so 8.3 deaths per a thousand people translates into these 0 0.0083 deaths per billion people. Okay, and th this are all year you know annual values. Okay, so so now, now that we have that, we can actually rerun the model and um, you can actually uh, run, run Vensim again, and here we have now two runs. Uh, the the red is the one the model that we saw before, we had which has births only, and of course in the births only model, the deaths are zero. Okay. Now take a look at the deaths in in in, in this model, and then you have um, you know number of deaths increasing uh, over time. They start today or or time equals zero, which is about about these days, and if you look at at the two last two three years of data. We've been, been uh, the number of people that have been dying in the world is roughly 56, 57 million people. Okay, so that's that's this number here. What the simulation is telling us is that the deaths are going to continue to increase, um, uh, but they essentially start tapering off. And it's interesting too because this increase is not that obvious. I mean, I I went into this thinking, well, maybe the deaths will, will you know will go down, and it's really the reason they're going up is because population continues to grow. So if there's more people, uh, essentially if there's there's a larger pool of people available to die, and that's because we have a mortality rate. That's how you know that's how that happens. Okay, so but that's over the deaths, but you can actually look at, at the same variables that we looked at before, and again the red is the uh, is the births only model, the blue is the Births and deaths model. Interestingly enough, here, um, if you look at the the red models what we had before, the the population grew from seven to twelve, uh, so it, it it went through capacity. If you add death or you know population deaths into the model, the system is going to start again at seven. That doesn't change, and it's also going to taper off. But it's actually going to taper off at below capacity, which is. I, it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, so instead of instead of stabilizing at 12 billion, it sort of stabilizes at you know a little bit over 9.5, maybe close to 10 billion. Um, so this this system doesn't reach capacity. Okay, when you add deaths, let's take a look at the number of births because actually because you've added death into the system, then you've you also altered the birth dynamics. Uh, so blue again. Um, is the um, is the new model red is the old model and you can see that the births um, you know decrease so the number of births uh, decrease but they taper off at a higher value so interestingly enough if you incorporate death into the dynamics the births are increased um, uh, so that's not actually not an obvious um, not an obvious result and it's because of this interaction this dynamic interaction between the two variables okay um, so you can look at the births, and you can look at now, interestingly, uh, at the at the births deaths uh, difference. So this is essentially the net, uh, so the net uh, um, uh, number of, of uh, a po the net population growth, um, and uh, you can see that of course uh, when 
uh, when you have births and deaths, uh, you have a, uh, I mean, they both tend to stabilize, but there's a, there's a gap at the beginning just because the first model has no, essentially has no deaths in it. Okay. So that's, you know, I found that interesting. Um, so if you look at ben, at ben Sim, so this is the, uh, this is the version of the model uh, with uh, varying input. So you can, in this model, you can vary the logistics rate, um, which the base value is 0 0.004. Uh, you have the carrying capacity at 12 billion, and you have the mortality rate of 0 0.0083. And you can actually change those numbers up and down. And I, I did a simple run just, uh, just for fun. So what happens if you increase the carrying capacity to 15 billion um, and... Uh, and now you have here the three models, and you can actually look at all the variables uh, in the three models. But I'll, I'll take a look at this just to make a couple of couple of observations. I think the first one is uh, that uh, you can see that when you have the so the births only model the green stabilizes at twelve. Okay, the births and deaths, uh, which is a red model with carrying capacity at twelve, stabilizes at a you know or at around ten billion thereabouts. Um, and um, when you have uh, a uh, when you have a, a higher carrying capacity of 15, the system actually goes up all the way and stabilizes at about 13. Still, so it, it, it grows a lot more, but it doesn't it doesn't go up to 15. So it, interestingly enough, it stays below capacity. Okay, so that's the that's one observation that you can make. Um, so we can offer some uh, some wrap up comments. Um, I, I think. I'll ask you to first look at the similitudes between the United Nations medium projections um, and our simple model with births and deaths um, with the 12 million capacity. And one thing that you'll see is that in both of these scenarios, the populations um, tend to stabilize at around 10 billion. Um, even though in our case, we have a hardwired carrying capacity of 12, so it doesn't really get to capacity. Um, so, you know, one question you can ask as well is, is this carrying capacity really relevant? Um, um, and being that it's such a, 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 a pretty controversial concept, because it, not, not because people don't realize that there, there might be limitations. It's, it is what goes into calculating a carrying capacity that generates the controversy, because it's, it's, really, it's a really difficult variable to estimate and in this case it appears to not be making a whole lot of difference at least not upwards okay so if you know if it's 12 if it's 15 it's you know it, it's um the system never really gets to capacity although it might increase so um and what about the other parameters if you look at the um i want you to play with the model and vary the mortality rate the logistics rate and see what you get and very importantly i'd like to i'd like to ask you to report back with any insights i'd like to see what you're getting what you're understanding, um, and uh, I, th I think one of the one of the key elements. I mean, of course, this very simple population model is not it's not a real model. It's not something that I'm going to go and use to actually make any any projections. It's more a model to understand these different dynamics. You know, what happens if you increase carrying capacity? What happens if you add death? If you increase the mortality rate? If you decrease the mortality rate? How is this going to affect the entire system? And you have you have some non-obvious dynamics going on there. So this is more, these models are more to learn and to gain insight. And this is something you've heard me say before, and so I'll, I'll reiterate it. So these models are more for learning. As we make it more complex and make it more realistic, we're st we start getting into, into more useful models. But right now we're in the process of understanding. Um, and speaking of, um, you know, speaking of more sophisticated, or more detailed models, i.e., I'm going to do a separate video on um, on a Vincent model that has been developed that uh, it has an interaction between human population and nature, um, and uh, so it's called Handy for Human and Nature Dynamics. Uh, so Vincent model, uh, and I'm going to make a sep separate um, uh, a short video about it. And but I want you to look at that model. It's got it's interesting because it, it has uh, has two. Um, cohorts of population so it's not just one single population and uh and it's got you know natural resources and how um how these interactions occur uh, so i want you to take a look at that and also take a look at the at the paper at the at the literature uh, about handy it's a, it's a really interesting reading uh, it's really interesting research um 
from a group of colleagues that I want you to take a look at. Okay, so with that said, I think uh, we'll, you know, we'll wrap it up. Uh, there's a little uh, cartoon here uh, <laughs> showing essentially, um, you know, the competition between the population, you know, driven growth, and that's the, you know, um, the stork uh, on the left-hand side, and then the, the carrying capacity, <laughs> which is the woman uh, trying to get rid of the stork uh, on the right. So hope, uh, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this lecture, and um, I'll, I'll put up um, this video and some other, uh, some other references on our Dropbox site and our Facebook page. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, thanks a lot. Uh, see you uh, next time.